to section number five, packed columns. And we already learned about trade columns, which essentially, as the name implies, the column, and you have all the little trays. And I prefer to start with that because it's much easier and intuitive to get a physical tray and assume this is as a equilibrium stage. It's very similar, but you will see later on that in engineering, we also have packed towers. And what this is essentially is the same amount of height maybe, but what you do is you add packings, uh, packings which may be rings or structured packaging, whatever it might be. And what you're going to see is that it is continuous. You will see that there, you cannot make a balance in a, a small amount. Since it is continuous, you need to make a differential balance, which in my opinion is a little bit harder. You need to use integrals and differentiation. Case, which was not similar to the tray columns. Tray columns are easier to teach mathematically and intuitively. And we are going to see first the equipment and then the type of packings, what they are, their conditions. Then we get to review what are the column specifications. Remember there's always height, diameter. What else do we have here? We see two methods, the high equivalent of a tray, where is it, H-E-T-P, height equivalent to a theoretical tray or packing. Then we get to see the mass transfer unit, which is the most important one. I will say the mass transfer unit is the equivalent of the uh, Kremser equation. It's the analytical approach for the diluted absorption method. Then we see some exer exercises and most importantly some case studies. We learn how to design a packed column, which packing, which size, which material, what will be the pressure drop, what will be the efficiency and so on. Okay, so remember guys I'm always here, whatever doubt you have let me know.